Hello viewers, welcome to Daily Politics. On this program, we discuss issues around politics, policy and governance. I'm Hamza Idris. Welcome back. If you are just joining us, this is Daily Politics on Trust TV. Do well to follow the conversation across our social platforms on Facebook, Instagram, and watch us live on YouTube. I still have Senator Yusuf Yusuf, who represents Taraba Central in the Senate in the studio. Welcome back, distinguished. Thank Senator. you very much. Yes, you you had issues in APC in Taraba right from the primaries where you, you vied for the ticket. Unfortunately, the elections have come. I'm going. Can you blame the internal wrangling in APC as what cost you the governorship election in Taraba? Well, I don't want to use the word blame. I think, you know, there's a lot of communication gaps. But I use the word blame in, in the sense that the leadership, the national leadership of APC did not do the right thing. Okay, you are taking the blame to the national headquarters now. Yes, I, How said, do you it, mean? I said it on the 27th of May that whatever that had happened to Taraba, the blame is with the national headquarters. What I did they do? <laughs> you, see, you see, when, when, when people you know, bring out their money, they bought their forms, they're eligible members of the political party. Give them their due respect. Why are you not respected by the national? No, as a candidate, you know, I, I was not respected or the candidates were not respected. Is it that they don't want you to vie for the governorship? Well, I, I may be caught and uncaught. That is what, what, what they don't want, you know. But really, if you say you are going to conduct primary election for your bona fide members who have contributed resources, who have built this party over a period of time, mm. you should be non-partisan. You should give them the opportunity to see who you are appointing to go and conduct the election. You should appoint people of impeccable character, people who are going to do the right thing, people who are not going to be rape rats. How can you know the, 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 the chairman of the political party mm. appoint his own DG wow. during his own political campaign to become the chairman of, this, of, of, of the party to go and conduct primaries? Maybe there is uh, an interest somewhere. Of course there is an interest. There is an interest. But even with that, we say, okay, let's go and do it. But what happened? They couldn't do the primaries. They ran back and, 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 uh, because they failed to Are you do making it. reference to the first declaration of Senator Emmanuel Bacha? Yes. And, and, and we know it was faulty. Because yes, you have said this not once, yes, not there twice. There was no primaries. How, how did it happen? But at the end of the day, he was doing on the ballot. Well, how, did, how did you arrive at that? Well, that, is, mean, that is Nigeria for you. This thing went to Supreme Court, and at the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court said, you know, uh, 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 the party is delisted as far as governorship is concerned. The candidate is not, you know, uh, eligible to contest. Look at Section 84, of Section 13 of the, of, the, of the Electoral Act of 2022. It's very, very clear. But you see what happened in a Nigerian way, mm. you know, they, 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 they went through the back door. You know, they, 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 the 14 days notice given to us you know, to do at, at, at the initial court. They now, they now did it after coming from Supreme Court. It is an abuse of, uh, abuse of judicial process. Uh -oh. The Supreme Court said, don't do that. Mm. They did it. That is contempt of court. And it is only in Nigeria you have, you know, people that are Democrat are not followers of the rule of law. Are you, are you pained by the, by the outcome? Now PDP has taken it. So many things are at stake now. The clamor for power shift is no longer there. And APC is now coming out, you know, a bruised political party of such. Yes, you see, you see sometimes when things like this happen mm. and, and you, you have now learned in a, in, in, in a big way, in a better way or in a worst way, I don't know. When we were telling them mm. that this thing that they want to do will not work, we have the grassroots. We know what is in the you grassroots. You think Bacha, who stood as the candidate, was not competent enough to, to win, to defeat other contenders? We have seen it today. Out of 16 local government, with all the Rick Maro, with all the support of the national headquarters, with all the support of the state headquarters, what is it? He got only two local governments out, out, of, out 16. of 16. 
Is that is is that the kind he, of? He kept distant thought because yes. um, I I think even NNPP got yeah. more votes than. Yes. With respect, with due respect to him, you know, he I think he sat down not once not twice that he's going to win. He's going to win. So did he win? Is it euphoria of fake assurance? You know. So I mean, people are so desperate that they can tell bundle of lies. They they they, they can say a lot of things as to come. Things that are of convincing people that they are on the ground. Everybody knew. Everybody knew, but they refused to accept the fact that, with due respect, Senator Emmanuel Bacha was not on the ground. I was appalled when he turned out to be among the first people who congratulated the e governor. Exactly. Elect. Did you expect something from him? I expected that. You know why? No. Simple. You know, when, when with due respect to Emmanuel Bacha, when he came to APC. Mm. He did not come with one single member of PDP executive. No when he left the, the PDP he, yes. for APC. So if you are if you are the minority leader in the Senate mm. and you are leaving your party to another party. To another party. Of course it is expected that you will come with a lot of followers. Yeah, goodwill and so all that. So as far as I'm concerned, with due respect to him, I've told him a couple of times that you did not come to add value in APC. You have come to share value. Because if you had come to, the, to bring in value, then your local, your, your ward executive or PD would have followed you. Your local government, even if not all, but a big chunk would have followed you. But nobody followed him. You know, so... He was not on the ground. I will continue to say that he wasn't. So he wanted to come, and then with, with, with a few, mm. you know, but and then consequential, and, maybe. and then yes, manipulate, and then think that you know things will go as before. We say this time, no, I will not sit down and accept injustice, no matter. That's how, why, yeah, you, no I think your case is. is still there in the, in you know? the Supreme Court, even though it's overtaken by, you, by you, events. You know, so as far as I am concerned, let us do justice. If with due respect to him, if he had gone to conduct excellent primaries, like uh, Senator Aisha Tubinani. In, in neighboring in, Adamawa. In, yes, in Adamawa. You know, nobody will query, nobody. In the end, you know, uh, 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 Nuhu Ribalu, you know, say he's not, he's not going to challenge it in his Supreme yeah, Court. After attempt. making the first attempt. After when, making the first mm. attempt. So why didn't he go there and make sure that proper primaries, you know, is done? I would have been the first person to raise his hand and say, congratulations. And you if, will work for him. Yes. If but you did you work for him during the election? Did you work for APC? Or you, I, you, you stayed at I, I, I worked for, for, for APC at the level that I feel that I, 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 I will work for. Because as far as I'm concerned, you know, Emmanuel Bacha was not a valid candidate of the PTP. I will not work for so another party. So you didn't party. work for the gubernatorial candidate? Yes. I, 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 will not, I will not work for another party after election to go to court to come as court to all the efforts that, that we have made. So you think that even if you had worked for him and he, 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 he win, maybe uh, another party will take it in of court? Of course, there was no primaries. How will you win So you will not put something on uh, nothing? Ex exactly. So that's what we have said. We have said it not once, not twice. But did you work for NNPP? Because their outing was quite impressive in Taraba this season. Did you work for the candidate I, of NNPP? I, or I, you asked your supporters to... No, 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 no. There is nowhere where I sat down and I said my supporters go and vote for NNPP. Okay. And there is nowhere I said that I'm going to work. The only party I know is APC. And but how did NNPP got sim that sim far? Because simple. I think they are some, somehow, somehow second. Yes, my own analysis is that there was protest votes okay. against, I, I, against APC because the way APC came and want to impose mm. a candidate that is not popular. So there was, there, was, there was protest. So there were protest votes, as far as I'm concerned. That was what must have happened. Okay. You know, you know it's, 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 it's of concern that a new party yes. that come and has overtaken, you it, know... It dislodged a, APC. A, 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 a whole APC, APC of Mama a, Taraba of Blessed Memory a, a, and APC Senator Yusuf. Taraba State. You see, so uh, I'm so concerned. I'm, I'm, I'm hot too. If not because the, the National Party did what they did, mm. APC would have been... Uh, they, they would have won the governorship. It may be Yusuf, it may not be Yusuf, it doesn't really matter. But as far as I'm concerned, 
you know, APC had the greatest chance of forming government in Taraba State come 2023. So, so the other issue okay. I raise, the, the fact that Central and the other senatorial laws, they will not have a shot at the government house in, in Jalongo. It is still remaining at the geopolitical zone of Darius. Well, you see, if, if you could remember, you know, uh, uh, when they were talking about where will the presidential candidate for APC come from? Yes. Is it the north? Is it the south? But in the end, what happens? They said, no, 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 no. Mm. The governor said, no, we insist power must shift to the south. In the spirit of fairness. Exactly. So in the spirit of fairness, we say power should shift out of Taraba South. Where that is... Ishaku where, where, where mm. there, in fact, there are some speculations where Darius also, you know, uh, walk, I mean, uh, try to convince people to look into that direction. But it didn't happen. Well, in if fairness it, to him. You know, if, in fairness to him. So, uh, uh, the Taraba South has, you know, eight years, mm. you know. So, I thought it is only natural. To move to central. To move either to central or to the north. Mm. I'm from the central. Yes. If it comes to central, fine. If it we, goes to the north, fair fine. Enough. But let us do what is right. Let us do what is credible. Let us do what is honor. I think General, uh, me, President Babangida said, even among thieves or crews, there should be honor. So do you think the, the PDUP governor-elect has the, the, the legitimacy, I mean, the acceptance of people across Taraba now? Well, it is, it, it is a difficult thing to say, you know, until, you know, uh, as time unfolds itself, you know, whether, you know, uh, 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 depending on how the court will handle the situation, mm. you know, uh, I made to understand, you know, NMPP has gone to court yes, challenging. because they felt that they won the election. Exactly. So, but do you think they, they won? Going well, by their... Um, um, I'm, I'm in APC, you know, I, 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 I think when something has happened, I think APC too protested. You know, there are certain areas that... Well, you, you know, know the, APC came distant thought. Yes, even if you are third, you have your own right, you know, to, to, like to, to protest. Like Labour Party, PDP at the centre. Exactly. Challenging so, APC. So, 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 so that's what has happened. But, you know, for one to say that, you know, uh, 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 we, 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 are, uh, we are credible candidates, we are popular candidates, we have lost because some people did A, B, C, D and E, you know, you know, IT is begging the... the, 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 the so are you calling for punishment for some people who did a kind of antipathy in Taraba? The best way to punish a politician is to fail him in election. That is the best way to punish a politician. Welcome back. If you are just joining us, this is Daily Politics on Trust TV. Do well to follow us across all our social platforms on Facebook, Twitter and watch us live on YouTube. I still have Blama Bukarti, human rights lawyer and fellow at the Tony Blair Institute for Global Change. He joins us from London and we have in the studio Dr. Kabiru Adamu, security and intelligence expert and managing director, Beacon Consulting. Welcome back to the program. Thank you. Yes, Doctor, before we went on break, you had um, uh, Blama saying, whatever we do, not to worry about it. We have to get the security architecture correct. We have to get it right for investors. We have to get it right for economic diversification. We have to get it right for people to live in peace and harmony. Now, talking about Benue, you have had it. Within a week, nearly 80 people have been killed, some in Guma and others in uh, the other local government area. What is your take? How are we going to get it right in Benue? Benue is just stone throw from Abuja. Um, so, first off, why are we where we are? Why have we as a people accepted this level of failure? For me, that is significant. If we go into the next administration with this level of acceptance of failure, especially in a very critical area as security, mm. then sadly, we are going to repeat the cycle that happened um, before President Muhammad Buhari into President Muhammad Buhari, and sadly, that would happen after President Muhammad Buhari. What am I trying to say? Um, this uh, president-elect and his deputy, yeah. they released a manifesto called Renewed Hope. Mm. I took time to go through that manifesto. It has provisions for security. And uh, if I remember well, in section five of that manifesto, that's where security was extensively discussed. And as an expert, I can tell you some of the commitments 
Uh, good. But, but uh, how sure are we, doctor? I'm sorry to cut you. How sure are we that they are really in, in tune with what is in that document? Um, it's work in progress. It is not comprehensive enough. And with all sense of responsibility, I will urge them to open up uh, their hearing and acceptance so that they listen to advice from experts mm -hmm. and persons who mean well. Bulama has made some very good um, recommendations. Yes. I have made some as well. There are several persons who understand this issue, who mean well, mm -hmm. and who say they should open up. Um, I, the second thing I want to say is, I learned this from the Europeans. They say trust is good, mm -hmm. but control is better. Okay. We, we have made a mistake in previous times, and we're still making that mistake. You just mentioned that, in fact, I will tell you that in my consultancy, mm -hmm. between the fourth and fifth week of March, yes. and the first and second weeks of April, mm -hmm. about 330 Nigerians have been killed. 330 Nigerians? Have been killed oh my with, within a space of four weeks. Now, this I, was, this I, between March and April. End of March. End of I, March. I, 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 that is, I'm yes, post-election. Very, very specific. Yeah. I said fourth week and fifth week of, of March. And then first week and second week of April. Mm. 330 Nigerians. I don't know any country in the world where you have that number of their citizens being killed yeah. and, and people behave as if nothing Nobody is happened. saying. When yeah. the Naira redesign policy was attempted and the governor felt it was threatening their political existence, yes. we saw what happened. Yeah, they they acted. responded actively. They went to court. Mm. We saw the Minister of Justice and several others responding. Now, how many of such persons have you seen their response? Yeah. So that is the point I'm trying to make. We, it is okay, and as a Muslim, I will pray for my leader. I will wish him well, but I must also put accountability measures. Yeah. And that is where I call on the media. Mm. We need to drop the way we approached security previously. We now need to look approach security with a lens of accountability. In other words, pick that renewed hope mm. that has been released by the president-elect and dissect it into what I will call KPIs, key performance indicators, mm. and then engage the government along the lines of these key performance indicators. Now, that's just one component, the media, the fourth estate of the realm. Yes. Civil society organizations, mm. they also have that responsibility. Engage the government from the lens of accountability. Develop key performance indicators and engage the government. Then every Nigerian, uh, should also engage the government along that the lines of accountability. You've promised us X, Y, Z, you must deliver. Doctor, I hope they will not disown the manifesto uh, as this government Well, if they did. disown yes. it, we should also <laughs> use the power at our, our disposal. Um, in, in Hausa, mm. uh, I don't know how to translate it in English. <laughs> Alright, Bulama, today there is angst, because if you check the social media, and I'm sure you, you, you check that, uh, platform all the time. People are angry. President Buhari has moved to Saudi Arabia today for, for Umrah. This is at a time when um, over 80 people have been killed in Benue. 85 are still in custody in, in Zamfara. And just yesterday, his spokesman denied that the president even made any allusion to disposing presidential jets and all that. This is in addition to the promise of calling um, insecurity as three of his cardinal aims before he became president in 2015. Putting all this together, what is your take about this back and forth, please? Look, um, unfortunately, insecurity uh, deteriorated under President Buhari, even though, as you alluded to, he promised uh, to restore security and one of the major issues he wrote on to become president was that he was a former or oh, he is a former military general and therefore understands Nigeria's insecurity and can be the, uh, if you like, the person to solve it. Unfortunately, if you look at the data uh, in President Buhari's seven years in office from 29th May 2015 to 29th May 2022, that's last year, 55,000 430 Nigerians were killed, at least 55,430 Nigerians. That's an average of 
around 7,918 Nigerians per annum. Hmm. We did not see that amount of fatalities in any year before Buhari's presidency. Wow. And thousands of Nigerians were abducted. Millions, millions were displaced from their homes, especially in the north central, the north, uh, the north uh, central, the northwest, and the southeast. Mm. And not only that, billions of naira were extorted. Remember that from December 2019 to this moment, over 1,000 school children were abducted from their schools. And for many of them, money exchanged hands before they were released. Some schools sold parts of their school to, uh, schools to pay ransom. Oh we know God. that the students of the Brinning Kebi, uh, that's uh, federal government Brinning Yawuri yes. students that were abducted, 11 of them are still in custody about 22 months after they had been abducted. Even this week, we are talking about like three attacks on school. The university students in Zamfara, the, sec the secondary school students in Kaduna, and another set of students in Nasarawa or Niger. In no country in the world has the amount of kidnappings that happened in Nigeria's body has ever happened. Nowhere in history in the world. Wow. I, <laughs> Bulama appeared very yeah. angry. Ma, 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 Bulama, we have to be a little bit um, mindful that data sometimes is um, determined by access. So I know as an example that in 2013, 13,000 Nigerians were killed. And, uh, so we, we, we need to qualify that um, okay. uh, when, when we say, for instance, that on, a, on the average, 7,000 Nigerians were killed, which I, I mean, agree. I, I mean, um, when, when you look at that on the average, of course, when you look at uh, the, the year Boko Haram became the, 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 in, um, mm. uh, as against the general statement saying that there is no part of the world. Okay, so I, I, and it appeared he wanted to say something. Yeah, go ahead, Bulama. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I take Dr. Kabiru's point. Uh, oh. He makes a mention of the fact that Boko Haram was listed as the deadliest terror group in the world in 2015. 20, in that 13, year, 20, 20, 20. Dr. checked the yeah. data, Boko Haram killed 6,000 people. 6,000 people. And now we are talking about an average of 7,918 people per annum. And when wow. I said nowhere in the world, what I made reference to was that nowhere in the world has history ever recorded that a whole school will be abducted, a yes. whole village or a string of village, all of them will be ab abducted. We know of times when 300, 400, 500 individuals were reported to have been abducted. Please, doctor, correct me if I am wrong. Where in history have you ever had that amount of abduction? Where in history have you ever had 1,000 students being abducted in a span of, in a span of month in one country? Yes, and Bulama, and, and you know, before you started talking on this last question I asked, of course, um, Doctor also mentioned the 310 people, right? Between uh, yeah, ending of March and uh, April. It's actually... Yeah. mind-boggling. Mind now, talking yeah. about things like this not happening anywhere in the world, maybe, um, Dr. you should uh, shed more light. Is it really normal for people to just go and abduct with malice and then go away with it? Look at these young children, boys and um, girls. It, 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 is not, it is not normal. I remember my point around saying that we should take control and ensure accountability measures mm -hmm. for the... The reason why it has, quote-unquote, become normal is because we have accepted it. Each and every one of us as Nigerians are responsible for what is happening. The, yes, the responsibility is in the hands of the government. Mm. Uh, section 14, subsection 2 mm. of the Constitution puts that responsibility in the government for the protection of lives and property. Yeah. But by accepting where the government has failed, yes. we as a people have also allowed it to happen. That's, that's my point. We should hold them to account. We should hold them to account. And how do we do that? Okay. Today, in mm. the media space, mm. narratives have overshadowed the issue of security. Mm. Identity is given security. Mm. Ethnicity is given For instance, if security. it is in Benue, we say government. Uh, we if say it is in Kaduna, or, okay, Hatsman. Yeah, they say the Hatsman. The exactly. same threat element that would kill in Benue is given a different name when it goes to Kaduna. It's Adoret. given a different name Bandit. when it goes to Niger. Mm. So that's my point. We need to, especially the media, 
uh, given the, the role of the media as the fourth estate of the realm, pick up that manifesto, pick up government policies. How many of us are, is aware that the President Buhari administration has gone far in the creation of an intelligence fusion center as well as the national incident crime base mm. that is of world standard? He has done that. He, he is almost 80% completed. But he, he, couldn't, he couldn't finish it in eight uh, years, doctor. He, but my point is he inherited some challenges and he has done some things that he needs to be praised. Welcome back. If you are just joining, you are watching Daily Politics on Trust TV. Do want to follow us across all our social platforms on Facebook, Instagram, and watch us live on YouTube. I still have in the studio Ambassador Musa Mohammed Soken, Presidential Campaign Council Coordinator, Tarabase Director of North East Grassroots Engagement and Orientation. And you are also the APC, uh, President APC Initiative for Good Governance. Welcome back. Mm -hmm. Kende Amadou, our in house <laughs> analyst. Welcome back. Yes, Thank I asked him a question which sounds top. I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Will you depend your figures at the uh, uh, election petition tribunal uh, mm. for the presidential? The figures that were given to Tinubu and Shetima mm. from the Northeast. Mm. Actually, I want to assure you that uh, to me, if I will use other, uh, you know, uh, if, I, if I'm going to use other apparatus. Yes. I will tell you that uh, the figure is even above that. Ah, yes. Based on your tally. Yeah. Maybe the tallies you use. It, of course. Maybe they cancel them uh, during collation uh, or, or... Of or, course, or. definitely. There are places where elections are actually cancelled. And uh, these places are APC strong, uh, you know, areas. Yeah. But uh, we don't have any issue with that for now. Yeah. Because... We have already made the order of the day. Mm. So we don't have problem with that. Okay. Mm. Uh, Kende, you see both APC, I mean, uh, Labour Party and PDP, you know, they cited um, this section that, that there are two conditions to determine a winner, right? They said um, a presidential candidate must secure the highest number of votes cast at the election. And then he or she must secure no less than 25% of votes cast in at least two thirds of all the states of the federation and the FCT. Is it FCT inclusive or and the FCT? Because Labour Party specifically, they say he didn't win the FCT. And based on that, they shall uptown the result. Are they really turning the laws upside down? They are being clever by half. How? <laughs> they are being clever by <laughs> how? How? The FCT. Yes. You understand? Yes. When, when, when the drafters, and right up till now, yeah. when the um, government is going to do, um, is going to award contracts that will cut across states, you hear them say the 36 states. Yes. And the FCT. Yes. The understanding is that FCT. Is a state. It's is, not. It's a territory. Okay. It's not a state. It's With a state territory. status or what? Uh, it's a territory. And the president is supposed to govern the FCT. Yeah. With the assistant of the minister but, or, but or a mayor, now, as the case may be. But, but, but he now devolves his power yeah. to the minister of the federal capital territory, who is an appointee. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So the federal capital territory is a territory. It's Clearly mentioned. Territory. Clearly mentioned. It's a territory. Mm. It's so not a state. It's not removed. So if you want, if you win two thirds mm. in thirty six states, yes. The idea is that the federal capital territory is included. It's not taken out. Even though he even won more than tw in more than twenty five yeah. states, right? Mm. Yes. Almost 28 or 29. Oh, 28 yeah, 29. twenty eight. Twenty eight states. So if he won, if he won two thirds, yeah. You understand in twenty eight states. Yeah. Yeah. Then you say he will not be declared winner because he didn't win two thirds in FCT. He's just being clever by half. Are you on the same page with what Ken yes, said? Actually, hmm? so you think hmm. th that um, prayer will not be granted at by all. the? It at will all. not. At all. It will not. It, it, doesn't it really doesn't make sense. It's all substantial. You understand? Hmm. It's 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 what politicians do. 
Everybody looks for technicalities. Okay, on the other side, of course, um, APC, they said Labour Party candidate did not even qualify. They cited mm. some sections of the Electoral Act that mm. has to do with uh, registration. Yeah. That ahead of primaries, you know, one month to the primary, I think subsection three, one ahead of the primary, one month to, to the primaries, you have to submit all the soft copy and the hard copy mm -hmm. of the register that has the names of all your members, members. and all that. And Peter Obi is all on that. Is this, do you think this is not pedestrian prayer by your party At all. to disqualify a, a, a presidential no, candidate? No, it's very glaring clear. The constitution is there. Yeah. Unless if you are cutting something outside the constitution, yeah. At that, you, you, will, uh, you will say it's invalid or what they actually said is wrong. Yeah. But then they are cutting within the, you know, circumference of mm. the law. Mm. Then what, what is wrong there? Yeah. yeah. So actually, they are going by the law. Mm. So actually, Obi has to be dismissed. In the case. In the case. Mr. Taiwo, <laughs> that prayer by APC on um, party membership of uh, Peter Obi. Is um, everybody is taking points and scoring scores? These are just technicalities. Mm. Okay, you understand? Okay, you bring your technicality, I bring mine. Mm. Do you want that? <laughs> so, carries more weight. <laughs> so let's let the court decide which technicality mm. carries more weight. But you know, you know, if you do say that, mm. then you go back to the argument of placeholder. Okay, like uh, this, um, the, the Masari from Kazena who held the card for uh, uh -huh. for Tidu, <laughs> so these are uh, the, ahead of uh, picking uh, Kashim Shetima. Shetima. So, these are also technicalities that politicians look at and try to, you know, people also try to use that mm. and it was thrown out of court. Mm. Yes, Do you understand. Mm. So, I don't think that based on that, you understand. I would think it would be double standard if you throw uh, the cut holder out, issue Peter will be out of the race. But you based see, on that technicality, they, there are difference. Okay, those ones they are actually party members. Okay, you understand. Mm. But in this case, he come from another a different party. Okay, you understand. So yes. it's not the same. No, but the, 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 the idea is the time frame, isn't it? Yes, the time frame. You're talking it's about 30 frame. days. But all of them, they are, still, they are members of the party. There's no dispute about uh, that. it appears that you, the politicians, are, you really love technicalities. Because it's, it's like um, uh, <laughs> most of the cases these days, they are won based on technical grounds, not on merit and all that. When are we going to solve this problem so that uh, courts will start... Um, addressing cases based on their merit rather than technicalities. Would you like to see that, or oh, you want the technicality? Something well, that is what I said earlier on in this program. Mm. I say the, we, the politicians have to rethink and mm. rejig the system okay. so that uh, everything will go on smoothly. Yeah, instead of um, making reference to yeah, courts yeah. all the time. You see, you, 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 you brought an issue of Koji State, yes. which we actually agree that uh, it was due to Sonda internal, you know, crisis mm. in the party. In the party. Yes. Just the way internal crisis cost you, Tarawa? In Tarawa State, Let, yeah. Let's go there briefly before mm. the, the, the program ends. Yeah. yeah. Are you still going to court in Tarawa to challenge the victory of uh, PDP? Well, you see, in that, the honors are uh, uh, the, 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 the candidates there mm. Mm. and the party. Yeah. So they are the one to determine whether they will to go, go to, to court, court or let but it go. But you think there are grounds to go to court in Taraba for the gubernatorial election? There are grounds? And to that, I am mm. telling you that that is left in the hands of the party. But are you and aware the there, there, there were as well. um, anti-party activities that actually affected your fortune? Yes, of course. I, I agree with that because the process of the primaries... Mm. There are a lot of uh, arguments, a yes. lot of tussles mm. that I said from the beginning that these tussles must have to be settled before we go to the polls. Yeah. But that was not, you know, taken into, uh, you know, into uh, cognizance. Uh, uh, cognizance. You see? So a house divided within itself cannot stand. To fail. Yeah. 
Okay, then you so can see I'm trying to uh, draw a nexus between mm -hmm. Taraba and and Koji. You can see they have lost it. Mm -hmm. Now it's post election, mm -hmm. right? Some are alleging that it was actually the APC that undermined itself in Taraba. Just the way APC is about undermining itself in uh, in Koji. How do we get it right? How should leaders of political parties approach internal issues so that they won't have problems going into election? I, I, th I think I said it earlier. There must be room for negotiation. If there are two camps, and the two ta camps are uh, determined to cancel themselves, yeah. they will not get the result that both of them want. Mm -hmm. Now, Taraba, you know, because Taraba had candidates that would unseat the PDP in that state. Wow. Even based when you look on, at the pedigree of the when candidates. You look yeah. at the pedigree of the candidates. Mm. When you look at the, even the performance of the PDP in Taraba State, yeah. they had everything it took to come from you know the opposition, the opposition yeah. and occupy the government house. The government house. But they did not agree mm. on the candidates. I know you are an interested party in neighboring um, Adamawa mm -hmm. and the uh, election, mm -hmm. the supplementary will, will take place mm -hmm. at the weekend. What are your expectations? Have you put, have you galvanized forces between Adamawa, Taraba, <laughs> and the other contiguous states to, to make well, it happen? Well, actually, I want to assure you today that uh, Senator Benani is going to make history. <laughs> how how is she Allah. going to make history? Because, because uh, she's oh, the few goes on ground now uh, is that uh, Fintri is leading. No. That was prior to uh, uh, the coming election. You are telling us what what was. happened. Yeah, yeah. During but the, the, I'm telling you that with the cancellation with, with of the results cancellation, and all that, the review and all that. Yeah, by the grace of God, the, she have touched virtually every word in Adamawa State campaigning, campaigning, and even adding value to the people of that uh, particular state. She have done a lot, uh, done a lot to them. So, when by her capacity and by what she has done mm. to, the, to her constituents, I'm assuring you that uh, you will be surprised. Welcome back. If you are just joining, you are watching Daily Politics on Trust TV. Do well to follow us across all our social platforms on Facebook, Instagram, and watch us live on YouTube. I still have Dr. M.M. Omokaro, he's the DG National Senior Citizen Center. Once again, welcome to the Thank program. Thank you very much. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, talking about capturing the data, what about those that have not been to school and they've never worked in the formal sector? They are all over the country. What are you doing to capture them and then to also give them access to some of these facilities? Uh, like I said, uh, focus actually is on communities and that is why we put um, very formidable stakeholders consultative forums in every state okay. and 90 percent of membership are retirees and then older persons whether they be farmers you know whatever they be artisans I was just telling you that we finished a national assessment of senior led indigenous crafts yes so these are rural rural artisans oh. oh yes and we were in the 36 states and FCT so we are coming out with a, a, a survey report um, about their challenges about you know source of raw material marketing and all that and having done that having finished that assessment we worked with NDE to build capacities yeah. of older persons and we had what we call a proof of concept grant uh, which enabled them to expand yeah and then now we have Grand Vintage Fair, which will be showcasing a lot of these treasures because we found treasures. Older persons are still the focal point for prosperity in their communities. Mm. Um, and they're so they're not as bad as at all. wrongly at assumed all, as by some people. people that once you it's are just retired, that they you have, have It's just that they've been excluded. They've been excluded. And largely we have been ignored our indigenous crafts. Mm. 
and what is happening there, the fright there is that is getting a sting because our, our young people are not interested. Yeah. So now NSCC is taking an intergenerational approach mm. in this uh, empowerment, this craft empowerment. Yeah. Um, so that now we are giving an opportunity for cooperatives, which includes, um, so we are putting them in clusters and forming cooperatives. Yeah. And that's also around the states. Mm. So for economic empowerment, we have gone down to the remotest place to find our older persons. Okay, is it part then, of what you launched in January? Uh, you probably love the documents, right? The mm -hmm. NSCC Strategic Roadmap of okay, Aging yeah. 2022-2033 and then the National Plan of Action and Project Activities 2021 yes. to 2025. Yes, I, I mentioned that earlier. Yes. That for us to take off, we had to know where we were going. Yeah. So we used the stakeholders' um, consultative forums across which we form mm. to craft that document and also the MDAs, nine categories of stakeholders. Yeah. And we launched that, and we also have launched. So we have the foundation and the roadmap and, and you're, the plan and you're of action, and we are following. Okay, but is it a culture or religion in this part of the world mm -hmm. that we don't have homes of the elderly where, you know, because mm -hmm. I've seen it in the US, mm -hmm. I also saw it in Germany, mm -hmm. that uh, at certain age, because children have also found their way, now mm -hmm. government, Pick these people, mm. good homes, recreation facilities, mm. the crafts, and mm. all that. So they live in a different world. Mm. Okay. I was telling you when I said we are standardizing oh, yeah. care. Mm. And I said um, there are many care settings. I mentioned the domiciliary as a home, especially for those needing long-term care, yes. since we demand those. And then I said there are also community care. And it's inside this community care setting that we are building our senior centers. Okay. That's what you're talking about, active senior centers. Yes. Where it's like a daycare, not care, but older persons in that community. In fact, we are launching our one community, one senior center campaign because we need private sector involvement. So we have been holding private sector round table. So you can build in your community. You can, your philanthropists can come together. So we are writing, we are crafting that policy guidelines yeah. and operational manual. This is the standard that you need to build a senior center. And so that we want to now be able to, you know, monitor and evaluate and be the ones to develop programs that you can now adopt to fit your cultural context. Yeah, that is so, the question I'm trying to ask trained. that, okay, how are you carrying uh, community leaders and religious leaders? Because for me, for instance, mm -hmm. if I make the mistake mm -hmm. of taking my mom mm -hmm. to that really, the whole community will cause me. That's this, is, this, is what, this is what I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. There are different care settings. Okay. And we, as the culture admits, yes. is that people prefer, internationally now, because of COVID, you saw how many died in institutions. Yes. So they are now coming back to prefer aging in place. Aging in place meaning age and grow old where you are familiar with, uh -huh. in the place of your choice. Okay. So that is why we are training caregivers ah. and certifying them and using agency models. And these people are going to have certificates, that, these yes, caregivers, yes, that they are, yes, they, yes. They are experts Different in that Different levels, area. so that we can deploy them to communities and to homes. And will they also operate privately going forward, maybe much yes, later, the whereby agencies, the agencies you can are now private. pay them to come and... The agencies are private agencies. Excellent. It's going okay. to be private agencies. That's why I'm telling you. So we are now developing, in fact, we finished the draft, and we are working with NBTE, you know, so that we can now you know, pick who trains, who certifies, who is awarding body, all those things. So we are now sanitizing. So any older person or adult children you know, can pick where they want their family to age. You want to stay in the home? Yes, you can get certified caregivers to come to your home and make sure that your home is age friendly and make sure that, you know, they can attend to whatever it is because they are trained mm. depending on the level of the need of and the, and, 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 the, and the case management that they see in that home. Or if you choose uh, residential homes, because sometimes, whether you like it or not, the market is opening. Some culture are averse to it, but there are some people who've lived abroad for so long, mm. uh, Nigerians in the diaspora, they are looking for a way to take their mom, mothers to and enjoy professional care mm. so that they can have peace of mind. Mm. That market is also opening. So we are also training and certifying private sector who want to open residential facilities. And then for these senior centers that we are talking about, yeah. that one is not residential. Okay. That one is a care center that you can go for sports, go for recreation, mm. go for interaction with your peers. We, we develop intergenerational programs. So you get up and you have somewhere to go and interact because loneliness and aloneness kills. So 
Nigeria is coming to that place where because of the National Senior Citizen Center, so many things are put in place. Those, those structures, those mechanisms. And don't forget that we run a federal system where yeah. you have the federal government can do the overarching policy. And when it comes to issues of health, it's in the concurrent list. Mm. So you must persuade the states. You must you know, work with the state build capacity and then align with state and local government so they can adopt the act, domesticate the act. And also you have that free way to partner with the states yeah. and then do what you need to do. Okay, my earlier you mentioned you mentioned health, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now transportation. I know yeah. in other climbs, older people they have mm -hmm. this special card that you yes. know yes. while traveling yes. you don't need to pay. Yes. You just show I tell the card I tell card. you I tell you that NSCC, I said is looking at multi sectoral mm. and is looking at aging as a development issue yes. so and i told you that we are building capacities and creating partnership in all the mdes yes. so when it comes to age-friendly transportation age friendly housing mm, and age-friendly uh, environment um we are working with nimsi to develop this card that you're talking about okay because we had that presidential directive that declaration that we should progressively register older persons so that cards can be issued to them to be able to access discounts and you know um, and, and concessions and then train. priority treatment mm -hmm. in public spaces, train and all that. So we have gone far on that. We have even developed a dummy, looking for where is the pool of money going to come from for that. Uh -huh, because that. that is the, the, the other yes. question I want. So to now that ask. is where we are, and then very soon, uh, NIMS is really working very hard with us. Now that is so national identity management. Management com commission. That's just okay, that is your commission. That's just Yours is a, is, is a center, right? Yes, it's a center. Ma but with, you know, the, the mandate is huge. What it's is huge. your relationship with your mother ministry? Don't you think oh, my you deserve ministry. to have a ministry of your own? Uh, well, now I tell you that it is my minister, yes. mm. Many ministers came before her. Humanitarian affairs was just uh, founded some some few yeah, years back. Yeah, Buhari created the, the and, ministry. Um, and uh, advocates had been advocating, advocating for. But she came in, and she facilitated, you know, the inauguration of this and this establishment of this National Senior Citizen Centre. Yeah. So that's the kudos to my ministry. But it, ministry. it appears the ministry and is overloaded. What, what we have done now mm. is that the ministry is partnering with us. Wherever you see any national social investment program, mm. the grant for, for poor and vulnerable, older persons are given a percentage. Yeah. So across this country, older persons have received that grant for the poor and vulnerable, mm. that one of grants. And right now we are working together with the ministry to now, you know, see mainstream some flagship programs into their NSIP programs. Yeah. Uh, so that older persons also, you know, we, will be targeted as beneficiaries of the NSIP program. Mm. Um, for instance, uh, the entrepreneurship program. And yeah. I told you what we have done in entrepreneurship. So some of those programs are going to be mainstreamed into the Okay, what about program. what about what about those that are too old? to do any other thing. Yes. Is it that there are plans for them to be getting some incentives, cash incentives, uh, just, like yes. in the meantime? So, so part of what we are discussing. Okay. Um, I want to say that some mm. percentage of older persons are in the conditional house um, household grants. Mm. You know, they are giving those grants mm. to households. So but we have moved and we are pushing. And I think I have the green light, you know, that older persons will be given a standalone social safety net. Mm. So we want to see that happen. Yeah. So that the older persons that are really poor and vulnerable, and you know this is end of life, um, so that it has to be a kind of social register that you don't exist because they are end of life, unlike other social registers. Yes, at so certain at level. Some, at some point you, you exit, have to yeah. exit mm. because you are okay now. This one should be this terminal. This one should be terminal, yeah because it happens in other climes, so which means it has to be really old, those older persons that need social care, and they are really poor and really vulnerable. If, if I understand, what you are trying to do is that uh, some old people, you see them praying that they should die because they feel so neglected, so, so neglected that so they prefer to die than to live. But help has come. Help has come because before now, nobody even noticed that they were older people. Before now, there was no, no visibility at all. Mm. 
Mm. Before now, it was total, total discrimination. Um, why? Because traditionally, it was family that took care of older people. Mm. So over the years, and that was the history we had. So and is it that you are trying to now relieve the families from we taking are all we the are whole body? Yes, we are trying to relieve. We are trying to relieve the burden of care. Mm. In other clan, we are trying to strengthen family to mm. care, and at the same time also take the part that government should take. Mm. Because older persons are also citizens of the country. Yeah. So where you have a primary health care center that mainstream geriatric care, it means that the older person can walk to the nearest primary health care center and have, have health care that is appropriate. And it's like for a full compensation age. for age, what they have done, age, their contribution for saving. And then the health country. insurance also, they can be covered. Welcome back. If you are just joining us, this is Daily Politics on Trust TV. Do well to follow the conversation across our social platforms on Facebook, Instagram, and watch us live on YouTube. I still have um, Kenneth Eze, who is the convener of Speak Africa, right? Speak Out Africa. Speak issues. Out Africa, yeah. And we have barrister Sam Kagbo, a senior advocate of Nigeria, who joins us virtually from Sokoto. Barista, before we went on break, uh, Kenneth read something for us, actually, the, the layman. The, he said the article D there is actually something that differentiates the states and the FCT. Assuming they said an FCT, clear. But that article D is like saying for you to be declared uh, president, you must also win uh, in the FCT, you must get that 25%. Can you shed light on this so that some of us, the laymen, will understand the meaning of that article? I, didn't, I, I, I did not study English language. I, I am not okay. in a position to go into a definite article or indefinite article. But like I said, Nigeria is defined as 36 states and the federal capital. That is how it is defined. When you say, what is Nigeria? That should be your answer. Okay. It cannot say 36 states and an FCT. No. It is 36 states of the federation and the federal capital. That is the definition of Nigeria. And the presidency is about what? The president of Nigeria. One constituency. And like I am telling you, the Constitution is the basis of all other laws. It is the Constitution that establishes every other institution uh, in the land. And therefore, it's a very serious instrument. It is not one that leaves gaps. It is not one that uh, leaves you guessing. If it was something, it would say so very clearly. Have you gone through a very particular section 34 as to the time and the particulars it gives into, uh, about the elections? If this does not happen, what happens? Yeah. Assuming you have the, the, the uh, first election, you don't have a clear winner. You see what he talked about. If the person is one, if the, 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 the candidates are two, if it's more than two, it stated all of those provisions clearly because what? It did not want, it, doesn't, it did not want anybody to guess. It made it very clear. The same thing with the issue. If it had wanted to make the FCG a special case, a special time, it will say so. It, oh. it would not leave it to the extrapolations no of no grammatical, um, uh, what do you call it now, construction of wise men. No. The Constitution speaks what it says and what it wants to say. All right. That is the way it is. All right. Uh, and barista, mind you, earlier cases see, have also the, come. The, this call, and those cases are about what? In mm -hmm. state, some local governments were in an election. Some local states mm -hmm. cancelled. In Kanu, a state was cancelled, and these other issues also came up as to say, if why you did not score uh, the quarter 
the 25 percent you know, the, the supreme court said oh no yeah as long as you have the number from among these words the uh the states and the fct if you have 24 you've cost along that is what the supreme court has said all right the, the other issue so i want to raise with you would we now start thinking to say if you have 100 percent of the vote in all the 36 of state of the uh, federation and you do not have 25 percent of Abuja, you are not a winner seriously all right the other issue i want to raise with we are you talking about is the people's um, mandate you know, the people's um, votes yes subjected yes. to what pdp and uh, allied people's movement apm and then action alliance they are all challenging yes uh Tinubu's victory based on this but the other issue that all of them also raise is that um, uh, the election was marred by irregularities non-compliance with the use of beavers to accredit and upload results yeah and then rigging in 11 states uh, now yeah and that is the allegation by by labor party now what will you say on this issue of uploading the result using IREF and then accreditation using beavers. Are these enough grounds for these political parties to obtain the outcome of the election? Accreditation is fundamental. It's a must because it's part of the election. Okay. And you must use the beavers. If you do not use the beavers, that election, wherever it is conducted without the beavers, that election will become. All right. So on the issue of the beavers, I am saying that is very fundamental, very, very necessary. But let's talk about where does the election end? You have the you have processes before the election, during the election, and after the election. Elections are conducted at the polling units. Mm. That is where you have elections. And that is where you declare results. You do not return a winner at the polling unit, but you declare results there. And the other layers that cascade into the declaration are written are only what? Collators of the results at the polling unit. So the only necessary and most important aspect is what happened at the polling unit. Okay. If you have evidence of any irregularities or any non-compliance that actually affected the results of the election, at any polling unit, you have your day. Mm. And definitely, that particular polling unit, the election that would be voided and the votes cancelled. Yeah. The issue of the IREF is post election. After you would have declared the results, mm. you have issued the results, you have entered the results in the electoral form, the result form, which is EC8A, either A or A1 or A2, depending on the election, you give each party a copy because each party is supposed to have what? A, copy. a candidate yes. at the election. So after you announce the election, you've counted, you've announced the election, and you've given the the parties the elections that the posting uh, of the election to the IREP is for the integrity yes of the process so that those who do not have the opportunity of going around the country and did not have the opportunity and couldn't have been in all the polling units could on the click of a button, yeah. cross-check and see the results. Are they have been what? Uploaded.